from Los Angeles. My name is John Kill and welcome to the 2020 version of the Future of Food 10 by 10 CEO series. And I'm delighted to have with me in interview number six, Khaldun Kelani, the CEO of Toronto and Dubai based InCube. Hello, Khaldun. Hi, John. Nice to be with you. I'm delighted to have you with me in this, this short 10 minute segment. It goes very, very quickly, Khaldun. So in the first 30 seconds, what is the elevator pitch for InCube? InCube is a citizen centric IT business solution provider. Been in the market for the past 20 years almost, uh, offering mobility solutions, and then we came into supply chain and recently trying to get into the blockchain. We act as a system integrator. Still, we develop many components internally, but we depend on the market leaders uh, to get their products and finally to offer the, the, cons the customers the best solutions possible. Wonderful. And Khaldun, in your travels in the Middle East and in Canada, around the world, uh, what do you see or what have you experienced as the key challenges that the food industry are experiencing today? Excellent. So from our perspective, the major solution that most food companies, they look at IT solutions as a luxury, is not something mandatory that they need to enhance their services and their products. They see it may be nice to have, but very few of them that they see it as a must to have. And this is really a problem. The growing demand from consumers to, tra to traceable food to its origin is becoming more and more of a need. Still, without technology, they cannot get that. And we still have the problem with food companies. They, say, they think that it's not that important. Oh, that's an interesting perspective, and I'll definitely come back to that in our conversation today. But when you look now at the challenges, and you, you take those challenges, and you start to look at the opportunities in the food industry worldwide, how is your company structured to focus on those uh, opportunities? So today, companies are trying to go globally, not, not as a choice, but as must. And the supply is becoming so crowded. Food safety is of high demand. So what we're trying to do, first of all, we are trying to educate the market through webinars, through seminars, through providing white papers and so on. But also we are trying to make sure that our footprint in the market will cover all the markets that we are after and will give support to international markets where our customers are importing from or exporting to in order to make sure that we have the proper international coverage when it comes to their products. So would you say that the food industry needs to migrate to a more digitized ecosystem? Definitely. And what is needed is not to get any digital system. Today, the market is going more and more into standard solutions that are offered by international global uh, regulation entities such as GS1, ISO, and many other more. Governments are getting involved. They're having their hands involved big time with, with, with the food company for so many reasons. Part to get their own taxes and uh, customs, but other part is to make sure that they, they, the food is safe enough. And accordingly, without proper IT solution, without having the digitization towards the products, there is no solution. So it's becoming a must. Gotcha. Now I want to go back to your earlier point uh, where you mentioned on the challenges that a lot of companies uh, see uh, digitization in, in the food chain as, as a luxury. What, why do you think is that? Is that because they're small mom and pop shops or they haven't matured yet or is it all management thinking? I think, I think all of what you mentioned is valid. Mainly what we've seen that most food companies, good ones that having excellent reputation are based on people who were good in producing the products on a personal level, in a shop, a bakery, that ended up to be a huge factory, but the same recipe, the old mama's recipe, is getting the product out to the market. We, we've seen old school of producing the products the way I know it is, man is managing today. And it's, it's a bit of a challenge because those people did not depend on IT, did not depend on technology. They depend on their love and passion towards the products they are producing. And today we need to convince them that we're not touching that personal feel in the product, but we're adding a proper technology that will help it to spread more, to stay more healthy, to stay longer on the shelf, and to give the consumer what they're asking for, which is 
the traceability. Cust companies, they don't know that today the consumer is the major drive of their product. A small WhatsApp message can really damage the reputation of a product, and it's not easy to repair that with whatever uh, investment behind it. So it's not anymore what you send to the market. If a customer or consumer feedback can come thousands of kilometers away, and the effect of that is huge. It's not anymore like before. So I guess just building on that then from a reputation management perspective, companies uh, need to ensure that not only do they have food quality, but also the end-to-end -end traceability uh, and also anti-counterfeit measures in place to protect their product from, uh, from being faked, I guess. Yes, that's absolutely true. The major point is it's not about traceability. It's not only about fake products. It's the whole cycle. You need to look at the solution end to end from farm, from manufacturing, all the way to the consumer. You need to make sure that the eco environment around the product all the way from manufacturing, storage, transportation is always taken care of. It's not only about serialization or aggregation. It's about every single step that is making sure the product is always safe, trans transported in a safe way until it reaches to the consumer who's today standing the right, I need to know. I want to know what's inside my food. Wonderful. And, and Khaldun, can you give us an example of the different technologies that are at play here? Are we talking about standard uh, traceability solutions or is blockchain a part of that? Is, is artificial intelligence and machine learning a part of that? So the, the solutions are many. We start with track and trace solutions, but we follow the blockchain concept. We believe that blockchain is coming. We know as a fact, AI is coming, but as we all know, we need data. Today, we don't have enough data to start talking about machine learning or proper AI solutions, but we are at the beginning of that. And in order to achieve what we need to achieve, we need to collect data and to click the data, we need the proper systems behind it. So the current solutions will smooth the process, will make it the best optimized process, but also it will make sure that you collect clean data that you can use for analytics, that you can use later on for machine learning, that you can use for AI solutions, and sky is the limit. Blockchain, I personally believe this is the ultimate solution that's going to come to the market. Some people, they believe no, but I believe it's coming. It might be delayed one or two years than expected, but it will come, and we will see that every single transaction of food will be based on a blockchain. Wonderful. Khaldun, in 20 or 30 seconds, um, what, what is the issue with data today? You mentioned that we don't have enough data, but is the data that companies have, is it clean or does it need to be structured? So far, because as I mentioned earlier, companies are looking at IT solutions as a luxury, as something nice to have. They really don't put the effort to make sure that all the data needed is collected correctly and wisely. This is, you know, the main issue. They don't care about it. They just care about the process that we processed an invoice, but they don't care about the information within that invoice. The consumer behavior was not part. The social media was never a part of uh, a marketing campaign. But today, yes, we need to understand focus. We need to understand the uh, uh, consumer behavior from all aspects and perspectives, not only from and that point of view. Um, Wonderful. Kaldun, in the last uh, 20 seconds we have left, uh, if you were up in front of 50 CEOs who are starting to bring a product to the market, what advice would you give them with regard to technology in 20 seconds or so? Inv invest wisely. Make sure that uh, IT solutions are needed, but don't buy solutions that will solve your problem today. Think about the future. Think about five or six years ahead. And once you decide on that, Think of your most important asset, your consumers. Make sure that you satisfy their needs with the investment you're making. Wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it all the way from Toronto, Khaldun Kelani, the CEO of Toronto and Dubai-based uh, company, uh, Incube. Uh, Khaldun, thank you so much for sharing the 10 minutes of wisdom with us this morning. Thank you.